I did it. I ran. This is all you guys have been asking me to do for a long time. I did run. I ran a half marathon. And uh, it happened yesterday. Still can't feel my legs. I'm assuming that's going to change at some point in the next week. But we got it done. It was good fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, I, I definitely was still getting over my cold at the time. So I don't know if my body enjoyed it. But I did. Uh, I got to run through Central Park. or uh, No, we didn't. Yes, we did. I think I blacked out for that part. Got to run through Times Square. It was all very, very awesome and wholesome and wonderful. And that's the reason there was only one Zealandism uh, for the last two days, because I, I couldn't record multiple because I was busy running for, you know, 24 straight hours. Don't worry, it didn't take me that long. It did take me over two hours, though. So I'm not one of the faster folks out there. But I can't leave you guys alone for five seconds because all hell broke loose in Turkey while I was running, I, I think. There was an unbelievable brouhaha on the field in Turkey, which I don't know if they just need to cancel football in Turkey. I don't know what they need to do. I like Turkey seems like a country that at least some of the time is able to maintain the rule of law. I come from Florida where that's not possible ever. So, I mean, they're doing better than us. But for some reason, when it comes to like football in the stadiums, I, they, they cannot get it under control. We've got owners punching refs so hard that it breaks their face. That happened already this year. We had an owner come down on the field and take the team off the field in the middle of a game because he thought the ref was wronging the team, right? Like just insane things happening that I've never seen before. Both of those things have happened this year, but nothing tops what happened right here. And I want to get ahead of one excuse. And that excuse that I see all the time is that well, we just care about the more, we just care about the game more here, right? Like it just means more to us. Maybe you would understand us acting like complete and absolute idiots if you just, if you got the game more. Like, if you, if you really grew up with, like, if you understood, like, if you, uh, like, the game, it's just so important to us. No, shut up. I hate that excuse. That's the worst excuse for multiple reasons. I just want to get ahead of it because there, there are going to be people that are going to insist that the reason this stuff happens is some sort of natural byproduct of really caring about like like really caring about a team and a game like uh, okay so the team is playing a sport right and I, I realize i haven't even showed you what happened yet don't worry we're gonna do that but if the team is playing a sport in order for a sport to exist there need to be rules and those rules usually involve unless it is ufc boxing or like hockey you can't punch people right there's a certain amount of time and there's a referee that oversees the game. And I don't know, don't attack the players on the field, right? Or else you can't have the sport that you care so much about, right? The sport can't exist if we don't have rules that you can't adhere to, right? There has to be rules, okay? Or else there is no sport. And that is just what's like, I, I look, I, I don't get to watch the Turkish League much. It's not like on TV in the US, at least in an area that I can find so the only stuff that comes out about the Turkish League is just this nonsense. I'd lo like, 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 just constant stream of now three things that have happened in the last couple of months that are actually unbelievable. Impressively. So I, it's not like, I, I'm not saying the whole Turkish League is going crazy, but there is definitely a segment of it that is. And that particular segment that lost its mind recently was in Trabzonspor against Fenerbahce. Now, this is a derby. I uh, write it's Fenerbahce at Trabzonspor. And at a certain point in the game, you can tell that things start to take a turn, okay? And that is a very obvious turn. People start to throw things on the field. And if you notice, they're not throwing one or two things on the field. They're all throw. They're not all throw. A lot of them are throwing things onto the field. That's a lot of cups, right? Look at the cups in the box here. This is insane. It's absolutely insane. And as I'm watching this video, we've got the players trying to pick up the cups. No, no, no. Take the players off the field. Stop the game right now. Oh, Zealand, you're so soft. Stop the game. It's dangerous. Like, I don't have to do this job. And if you disagree with me, that's totally fine. Right? But this job doesn't like... If you disagree with me and you start throwing cups at me, I don't have to stay in this chair and try and dodge the cups while I tell you the opinion you disagree with, right? That would, that would, that would be a danger to my safety. I'd leave the room, leave the field. You have, the referee has the authority to delay the game. You have to take the players off the field in this situation. 
It is obviously not the ref's fault for the way that certain fans are acting. But you have to take the – like, this is already bad. We've got, you know, the the, the players are picking like, – like the, like the fans are some sort of impudent group of children. The players are picking up all the cups. And they just keep throwing more cups. I mean, look here. They hit a dude in the head. For some reason, the clips are out of order. This dude did get hit in the head. Everybody, when, when footballers get paid all this money, right, which they do get paid a ton of money, right, a lot of them. Well, everybody always loves to talk about, you know, when the play, they play complain about how much they have to pay, or sorry, when they complain about how much they have to play, everybody just is very eager to point out that it's a job. Well, if it's a job, right, you should be protected from hazard while you're doing that job. Uh, it, there, there shouldn't be an inherent hazard in being a footballer of just getting drilled by a cup. Right? If this if I if I walked into McDonald's and they messed up my order and I picked up a cup and threw it at the person, I could be arrested. Like they, they it, it, yeah, it's illegal. I am assaulting that person physically by throwing a cup at them. This dude gets beamed in the head just because he's playing for a team that is, you know, a rival of the other team. And it wasn't even just the players. This is the ref. Somebody throws a smoke bomb. I think it hit him in the back of the head at the very least and like startled him from behind. And yet somehow we play on. No, no, in the game, it's not going to get better from here. The only way to stop people from acting like fools, from acting like idiots, is to actually use the authority to stop the game. Don't play the game. Play the game in an empty stadium, right? I mean, that, that, those are your options here. If, if they're not going to stop doing this, right? Because their team is losing in a derby. They're just pelting everybody with objects. You know what could make this more dangerous, though? Let's get fire involved, because that, that's what they did. There is this really unnecessary red circle points out. There is a flare that is thrown into the box. Yeah, I don't know if this ref is just used to officiating in, like, active war zones here, but this is not normal, right? Like, you should be stopping the game to deal with this. And, and not only is the game not being delayed because of the insane number of things being thrown onto the field, we now have an active flare, which is obscuring the view of half of the, like half the players on the field. Can't even see the freaking ball in the ref. He, he doesn't notice it. All of a sudden he notices it and he still waits until a foul is called to go like deal with it. He waits it like, oh, there's a foul and I'm going to come over here and try to deal with this. And we've got, we literally have a player picking up a flare in the middle of an active play. A defender, when the ball is in their defensive third, having to pick up a flare to be able to see what's going on. The goalkeeper, Lovakovic, is on the ground. He gets in the face, like, it's hard to see here. He gets in the hit in the face with, like, a coin or something. His face actually starts to bleed, right? He's got, like, a Band-Aid here that they're, like, uh, they're trying to put on his face. He's literally bleeding. This is the second player that there's video evidence of them being hit by an object from the stands, and yet the game continues? This dude's bleeding. He got hit in the head with a coin, which, like, this is totally unrelated, but incredible throw by that fan. I mean, obviously bad intentions, and they should never be allowed back in a stadium ever, but, wow, they, I mean, American football quarterback, they could really use that. You know, that's a good arm. Just a, it's a good arm for the bad and, you know, the, the wrong reasons, right? We need to convert that arm for good. Can you throw a spiral like Tom Brady? But as you've probably seen, all of this was a buildup to an insane meltdown that happened on the field after the match. Those are all just different incidents where I think the game should have been delayed. Uh, you could even punish Trabzonspor for not being able to control their crowd and just give the game to Fenerbahce, who for almost all of those clips was winning by multiple goals anyways. After the game... In, in what is an entirely normal interaction between a team that just won a match, Fenerbahce's players are in the center circle dancing around and celebrating amongst themselves after winning a derby, which, while painful to watch as a fan of a team, you know, that is their right. You are allowed to do that, right? Somebody is going to win the game. Somebody is going to lose most of the time. You can see the fans are already not happy about it. Because somebody has chucked a cup. It appears in the bottom right of the screen right there. Somebody with a particularly good arm. And that is the bubbling under the surface. Because the next minute of this video is going to be the full commencement of the meltdown. So here we have our first fan. He has broken through the rather thin barrier of 
of stewards guarding the edge of the ground and has decided to square up with the entire team. Why? I don't know. He's decided to tether the entirety of his pride to that of his team, which got its ass handed to it in this particular match. Uh, and has decided that, I don't know what the actual rule is in Turkey, but maybe a night in jail or something, or the $5,000 fine or a stadium ban is worth squaring up with the entirety of Fenerbahce. And Fenerbahce, for reasons that I do not blame them, is totally down to square up with this dude because they've been getting pelt. I mean, 211, so the entire starting lineup, has been hit by an object thrown from the stands. They're probably, they're, you know, you're a little angry here. But it was not a good idea to square up with them. I don't think anybody read this situation particularly well. Discretion is almost always the better part of valor in a situation like this. Just leave this one dude alone. Don't pay any attention to him and let the stewards deal with him. But that's not what happened. <laughs> At that point, you can hear the crowd reacting. The, the, the fact that this guy is now getting beaten up by the Fenerbahce team. It, well, well, like and coaching staff, and there seem to be some in there that are trying to, like, pull the players off. It's a bit of a two steps forward, one step back situation. Uh, that That is now, you know, the crowd is now I'm full of drunk dudes that are, that are shouting, and what we have here is a failure in logistics because a lot of stewards start to run in to try and defuse this situation, which is a good idea until you realize that those stewards were the only people holding back a tidal wave of angry Trobs and Spore fans. And very quickly, as you can see, more and more stewards are running in to try and deal with the situation here, which is allowing more and more Trobs and Spore fans to get onto the field, taking this situation in a matter of 40 seconds from Trobs and Spore just kind of hanging out in the middle of the field in a little post-game celebration, as is really very normal, to a really dangerous situation. This is very dangerous. The guardrails that are in place to keep this from getting completely out of hand are now gone, and there are multiple players whose blood's up, and they have already been in a brawl with a fan. If you look over on the left, there is a player for Fenerbahce going full one-on-one -on -one with a fan. They're just having a full-on fight right there. They're going after it right now. Like, I mean, if, this is a full-blown fight. This is a player that just played a match in a fan on the field. Can you imagine this in the prim? But keep your focus on the edge here because play, fans are going to start streaming in. There is still a lack of urgency among the Fenerbahce players. Like, you can tell they're just kind of going, wow, this is a little crazy. It's about to get awful. Now turn your attention to this area where one of the players on Fenerbahce is going to uh, narrowly dodge being skewered by somebody wielding the corner flag as a weapon. At this point, it is finally clear to everybody involved, particularly on the Fenerbahce side, that this is a full-out, dangerous, riotous situation, and the players start to bolt for the exits. Some are in a bit more danger than others, right? Some are involved in full-on fights and dog piles all over the field, and there are some other funny incidents in, in a not funny situation that are happening all over the place. Like, Mishi Bachuai legitimately attempts a roundhouse kick on one of these guys. You can see him right here. And he, like, I, but look, I think that's fair. This is a dangerous situation. The fans are on the field with bad intentions. But yeah, let's just, let's just watch the rest of the clip here. That's basically it. The rest of the thing is just them trying to get down the tunnel. 
but you can see how the tone of that changed very quickly. I don't know what the stadium announcer is saying. I'm assuming he's staying, saying, please stay off the field. But literally the only thing that prevented this from being a stage five catastrophe is the fact that most of the Trobs and Spore fans didn't rush the field, right? Uh, but if they had, all of the stewards or the vast majority of the stewards had left to try and deal with the initial fight that was happening from the one or a few guys that got through. And that just opened up these floodgates. This cannot happen. It can't, it, like, this cannot happen. This is so unbelievably dangerous, not just for the players, but also for the fans. Like, running around on the field, you're, you're trying to attack professional athletes who are then attempting to defend themselves and, and trampling all over each other. They're battling with riot police to try and get down the tunnel. What the hell is happening? What the hell is happening? I will, I will literally never, ever have a different opinion about this sort of fan behavior, right? Should the players have just walked away? Absolutely, right? But they also got attacked on the field, right? And, and, and they, like, I mean, people are trying to stab them with, with corner flags. This, look, this just can't happen again. You have got to find a way to make sure this doesn't happen again. There is no place for this kind of fan mentality, right? There isn't, you can be the best fan ever of your team. You can invest your entire, you know, personality and well-being into your team and not be a danger to other people. The moment you cross the line to being a danger to other people, a danger to even players on another team that you don't like, you got no play. You should not be allowed in the stadium. You've got no place being, being around the game in this capacity. Like you have to have that trigger in your mind where you don't actually attempt to physically harm other people. And there's got to be some sort of protocol in place to prevent this sort of situation from getting this bad. Thank goodness. I saw some of the riot shields in front of the dressing room. Those stewards would not like by themselves would not have been able to keep them out. Who knows what happens if the fans are able to get into the dressing room area. Like if they can get down the tunnel, this could have gotten so much worse. There's a lot of fans and only a few players, right? We're talking about a situation that was that close to making headlines all over the place. Right, it, it, you have to deal with this the strongest way possible. This is just freaky to watch. Like when I was getting tagged in this, and I saw the initial video, you're like, "Dude, I'd never want to go play in Turkey now. I would never want to do it." You want to have to deal with that as a job hazard? Dude, that's crazy. That, that's about it, though.